I think that the macho image is no longer there. We no longer see masculinity on that pedestal. What we have now, we have the Zessa coming in. You know, so the macho <laughs> is no longer there. The, the Zessa has taken over. And that Zessa is associated with a man who doesn't need education. He gets rich quick. A man who has maybe many girlfriends, you know, has maybe outside woman, you know, right. so that the the link between masculinity and crime, the link between the zest and the crime is now entrenched. And crime and masculinity is has become entangled. Uh. Welcome to Man Story. Jerome Tiloxing is a lecturer from the University of the West Indies in Trinidad and Tobago. Tiloxing has published articles and spoken at academic conferences on masculinity, gender relations, education, and peace building. One of his books is entitled Achieving Peace, Equality, and a Healthy Environment. In 1999, he initiated International Men's Day on the 19th of November and also began the inaugural observance of World Day of the Boy Child on the 16th of May. Today on Man Story, we have the man, the myth, the legend himself. For those of us who are not aware, International Men's Day was started by a Trinidadian, Dr. Jerome Tiloxi. It is a, a day that I'll, I'll let him explain some more. So I'm so very curious as to what started it and everything else. So, Dr. Tiloxi, welcome. Welcome to Man Story. Thanks very much, Alvin. And let me say hello to all your viewers. Awesome, awesome. So, who is Jerome Tiloxi? I'm a lecturer in the Department of History at UE St. Augustine, right here in Trinidad and Tobago. And before I've been a teacher um, at primary and secondary schools. Awesome. And what, what caused you to start International Men's Day? What exactly is International Men's Day about? I, I saw the need to have this day because during the 1980s and 1990s, I realized that there were certain stereotypes, certain stigmas attached to men. There was this negative publicity also. Men were involved in a lot of the antisocial activities. And some of the good men were not highlighted, you know, and I felt there was a need to have this special day. Awesome. Awesome. And what made you choose the 19th of November? For two reasons. It's my dad's birthday, and nice. he has been a foundation in the family and a role model for us and others. So, you know, I thought it would be a good way to honor him, and I wanted others to see that they could honor their fathers, stepfathers, grandfathers, father figures in the family, like an uncle. Yeah. Uh, so it was a personal connection. I wanted people to see they didn't have to look online or in cinema or in the movies. And secondly, on the 19th of November, 1989, some of your viewers might remember the strike squad lost 1-0 to United States, that World Cup game. Ah, right, right. And I felt that, you know, I wanted to... A very controversial game. A controversial <laughs> game. <laughs> I wanted to capture that moment, that that feeling of nationalism, that feeling of unity and harmony where so many barriers were crossed. And I felt that you know, I wanted to transcend these feelings into the men's movement. Sweet. Sweet. Good stuff. Good stuff. So you, you mentioned that you wanted it. You wanted to use that particular day as a way to, to um, speak to honoring your, your, your father. What was your... What was growing up like? It was, a, I would say, more or less a, a sheltered life, meaning that it was more or less going to school, staying home, going to church, going to events that the family had, um, cinema, that sort of thing. But I didn't, I, I wasn't, you know, brought up to grow, to go to parties and fets. So, you know, that is what I mean by being a sheltered life. You know, it wasn't something in which was part of me. 
you know, I, I did my line, you know, with friends, you know, we go to the malls, you know, we go to cinema, we go to the beach, but I didn't have nice, that, nice. you know, um, exposure that some other people had. Okay. What are some of the, the challenges you had, whether growing up or otherwise, that shaped Jerome Tuluxing? I think some of the challenges were, firstly, I didn't understand the value of education. Interesting. I, I was going to school in what, you're a lecturer? I don't understand this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I was going to primary school and secondary school, and it was this routine, this monotonous, boring routine uh, in which we were just memorizing. We were just learning to pass exams. We was a, it was, you know, just so competitive. And I felt that, you know, what was this education so important about? Because people were succeeding and becoming famous and successful and wealthy who were not in education, you know, like sports stars. Yeah. All right. You know, so um, I started to, you know, wish I wasn't in education. And then it's only later on in Form 6 and first two years at university, I started to really appreciate how education could empower you and help you later on in life. You know? And a second challenge is that I didn't understand how come society had all these rules. You know, some of the rules didn't make sense. You know, I didn't understand why we had to respect certain people, why we had to respect our elders. You know, it's only later on I started to appreciate, you know, the importance of rules, the importance of laws. You know, um, right. so I started to question a lot of these laws. I started to, you know, as I said, think outside the box. So you used to give trouble? I was, a, a... I was a sort of trouble child, you know. Um, <laughs> And I wouldn't say in a bad way, but it was somebody who would question, constantly questioning, why must this be so? Why do we have to do this? Why not the other way? So I think this is what, you know, made me start to critically examine the society. And in critically examining the society, I'm rather curious, you know, what have you seen? What is your prognosis? I have seen that we as a society, and when I mean we, I don't mean in Trinidad and Tobago, but the rest of the world, is that I feel that many of us might be a bit too materialistic. Many of us, you know, might have super superficial relationships. And now in the 21st century, I'm seeing something even more frightening where we are so absorbed in technology that we are becoming disconnected with other human beings. Right, and I could, right. I could tell you instances where, you know, parents are at home or one parent at home and the child or the children watching television or playing video games and the parent or parents on their cell phones or computers doing work, checking emails, TikTok, you know, on the internet. Um, so I'm seeing, you know, the dangers of technology. I know it has its benefits. I'm seeing the dangers. And I'm seeing, you know, this could be one of the reasons why we might be seeing a breakdown in family life. Uh, this is true. This is true. This is so true. So true. On, on, the, on the note of masculinity, what, how... How do you think that word is viewed in the Caribbean and in Trinidad and Tobago? I mean, I'm, I'm sure some. <laughs> I have so many questions, eh? What are they trying to put them in, in, in sequence? Yeah, I feel that the term masculinity, maybe 20 years ago or 25 years ago, it meant power, it meant respect, it meant a man with friends. You might have heard the term the macho man, the macho image, was somebody who was well-kept, somebody who might have been wealthy, associated with influence, right? Yeah, Affluent yeah. people. But in the last five years, the term masculinity might mean something negative. And you know, when we hear masculinity, the next word pops up is, is it toxic masculinity? Oh, God. 
you know so we don't hear about the good masculinity we don't hear about the good men you know suddenly masculinity has become a bad word it has become yeah. corrupted you know so i think what we need to do and what i'm seeing is we have some rewriting to do of the gender narrative we have to do some revisionist perspectives of definitely what masculinity really is that is so true eh? i mean i was i was telling someone recently two persons that the issue i have with society you now is that there isn't is not men is a lack of men because according to one study in jamaica 85 percent of the young men the persons in prison come from fatherless homes 90 percent wow. of the men who are in gangs come from fatherless homes wow. so there is clearly the issue is a lack of masculinity a lack of men in homes right. showing the young men an identity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i know that now uh, across the caribbean we've been ha having a lot of issues with uh, with crime yeah. um what do you think is the link between the men's idea or view of masculinity and the the crime situation apart from what we just mentioned i think that the macho image is no longer there we no longer see masculinity on that pedestal what we have now we have the zesta coming in you know, so the macho <laughs> is no longer there. The, the Zessa has taken over. And that Zessa is associated with a man who doesn't need education. He gets rich quick. A man who has maybe many girlfriends, you know, has maybe an outside woman, you know, right. so that the the link between masculinity and crime, the link between the Zessa and the crime is now entrenched. And crime and masculinity is has become entangled uh, you know and, and that is sad because a lot of times people get involved in crime just to get respect from the boys on the block the community yeah. the gang you know um, so what what i am seeing alvin which is very sad i'm seeing variants you know we talk about variants when we're talking about the covid and pandemic yeah. we deal with variants I'm seeing variants of masculinity. Some are good, some are bad. Mm -hmm. And it's so difficult to separate the good from the bad because when we start doing that, we marginalize men who we should be helping. Uh, okay, okay, okay. You know, so, um, and it, it contradicts International Men's Day. International Men's Day is about uplifting men, creating unity, creating harmony, helping men who might be downtrodden on the sidelines so that we cannot just, you know, start to say that these men are bad because, you know, they're involved in crime. We have to find out what are the causes of crime. How could we help them? How could we find solutions? You just mentioned International Men's Day again. When have you have you ever heard anybody say, so man, I need them things, eh? You, you, you men have everything, you know? <laughs> Have you, have you had any pushback as it pertains to the creation of this day? I think you are correct that that every year, it's a, a recurring question. It's one of the questions people always ask me, why do we need it? Every day is a man's day. Every day, because they say we live in a patriarchy. And then I would casually tell them, without giving any statistics, I would say, you know, how many of the persons who are incarcerated are men? Thank How you. many of the persons who are murdered are men? How many of the persons who die as firefighters are men? Or in war. Or war. I ask them how many people get heart attacks every year and die. Who are those who are most you know, liable to, to die from maybe complications of diabetes? And it, the statistics point to men. So I think when I start giving them the health occupational statistics, you know, and the war, they kind of realize why there's a need to focus on men for at least one day in a year. Yeah, definitely, definitely. You know, it's, it's, it is so necessary for us to have these conversations. So have you um, had any... Okay, so, you know, we have different versions of feminism. 
Right. Have you ever had any um, clashes with with feminists who you know that that have been in in, a, in an instance where you were able to to move from two extremes or from one extreme and, and agree in the middle because there are many women who appreciate that there is a need for men to to have that support base but there are some who you said the word men and nothing pleasant comes to mind so have you had any occasion to to convert <laughs> yeah i'm converted yeah i i meet that challenge every every so often eh? you know it's a regular challenge where sometimes i'm in the grocery sometimes i'll be traveling abroad sometimes i'm out you know liming and somebody would recognize me and say you know what you associated with men's day you know um why why you know and they would ask me this and then i would tell them i'm talking to feminists now i'm talking to women who are hardcore feminists and they would you know i would tell them and say you know what about the men who might be taking care of a daughter who is autistic a man who gives up his job and becomes a full-time dad a stay-at-home dad to take care of his wife who might have alzheimer's or parkinson's I, I tell them stories that i know firsthand of men who have taken their early retirement to stay home with a wife who has fighting cancer stay home with a daughter who was injured in a car accident you know and then they realize that you know their view of men has been you know so wrong and outdated and outmoded you know i i, I give them these stories you know i, I wouldn't quote any psychologists i wouldn't um you know talk about any theory i give them practical day-to-day -day examples about yeah, men yeah. who sacrifice their lives for girls and women um and i tell them i say sometimes when a policeman a soldier a fireman loses his life in the line of duty saving a female he doesn't ask you know why are you a female he wants to save a human being so i try to bring in that human touch you know and tell them that the world that they see it is not so bipolar because they're seeing the world as just men, women. Uh -huh. And, you know, they kind of soften up. You know, I don't know if they do it with me and then they go away with their, with their beliefs the same way. But I try to show them, you know, that, you know, men are not, all men cannot be put in that box, cannot be pigeonholed. Yeah. You know. Awesome. That's why we need to have these this the dialogue for sure for sure yeah listen you're doing some great some great work um i'm i'm so happy that the the creator international men's day is actually from the caribbean and from trinidad and tobago um of course you know there's a little bias i wouldn't mind if it was a jamaican <laughs> <laughs> uh, great stuff man i uh -huh. i Alvin, let me tell you, Jamaica has been giving me support for this Men's Day for the past 15 years, one five. Yeah. And it's not just for Men's Day. There are certain offshoots of Men's Day, World Day of the Boy Child on the 16th of May. Yeah. On the 21st of January, we have International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Men and Boys. And I have activists on the ground, people on the ground, the, the ministries in the Jamaican government, Successive governments have been, you know, promoting Men's Day. Um, so the Caribbean support is very heartening, and I'm really grateful for it to see that we are thinking in a progressive way. We are not just letting the first world or developed countries run with this. We are also participating in these special days. Awesome. I know I'm, I'm going to um, let you go with, with this one. What would you say to the young men who are currently involved in things that they shouldn't be involved in? what If there's one message, one thing that you'd like to let the young men know who might be in a gang or thinking about a gang or, you know, tittering yeah. al al on that edge, what would, you, what would you tell them? I would tell them that the, the need to reflect on the value of life, the value of their life, and the and the reason that they were put on earth. You know, sometimes 
we take life for granted. So I would want to come down. I wouldn't want to, to push anything spiritual or religious in them because, you know, sometimes they don't want to hear that. You know, they get fed up, you know, they, they turn off. So I just want them, you know, to appreciate their life, how valuable their life is. There are so many people out there who wish they could live another day, who wish they, you know, they could move around in society. Um, so that I have seen people, you know, um, dying in hospitals. You know, I've seen people wishing that they could live for another year. So I want these young men and young boys to, to think twice, you know, about how they could contribute to helping their country, helping their neighborhood, their community, their village. You know, they have potential. They have roles. They have responsibilities, you know. And, and we, and these men, these young boys, just need to do some reflection, some introspection, and see that their life could, you know, improve and they could, they could brighten another life, you know. For real. And one more thing, I'll make this the last one. This, 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 the topic this time is men leading by example. Right. What would you say to the father or the mentor? What would you impress upon him as, 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 a, as someone who's leading? I would tell that father or mentor that his role is a 24-hour role. It's not an eight to four job. It's not a job that after mm -hmm. you, your son reaches 18 years or 21 <laughs> years, you forget about him and say bye-bye, get out of the house. You know, and yeah. you're a big man. So I think that the father or the mentor has to realize that this job is till death do us part. You know, it yeah. is something that is a gift. Being a mentor, being a role model, being a life coach is a gift that is given to you and it is something that you must cherish you know so many so many people out there wish they could be a father so many people wish they could be a husband so many people wish they could be an uncle even so i think they need to reevaluate you know yeah. this very important role that is often unrecognized by society. Sometimes society does not appreciate it. Mm -hmm. But we men, you know, we need to understand and, and those fathers and mentors need to understand that, yes, it's a thankless job, but it's a job in which the world is depending on us to do it. And if, 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 if we are not there, then the, it, everything breaks down. <laughs> <laughs> there will be chaos. There will be a collapse. You know. Yeah, I keep saying, you know, men are the foundation because we see what happens when so few become so do the wrong thing. So, you know, we, we have a, we definitely have a lot on our plate, but we don't have a choice but to do it. But I want to mention, Alvin, that from my studies, I've realized that, as you would know and your, 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 your viewers, that we have a past of slavery and indentureship. We have a past in which, you know, when Europeans came, they killed out the first peoples, the indigenous, they had the genocide. So we have a past rooted in violence, destruction, you know, um, exploitation, part of colonialism, part of imperialism. So we have to try to break that mindset. We have to try, you know, to, to know the past, but try to create a new path that is not violent, that is not so, you know, disruptive thank you very much dr zero to singh awesome 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 stuff thank you very much for being on man story and i look every time i see stuff with you i'm like yeah <laughs> <laughs> good stuff man thank you very much and and what you are doing is certainly needed and Thank you. Thanks a lot, Alvin.